So we're now going to talk a little bit about how to prove the differentiation formulas for the sine, cosine, and tangent. Uh, I leave most of it as an exercise, but I'm going to give here some comments so that you can get started. And the first observation here is that you really just have to do this for the sine function at zero. Because if you're able to prove that the derivative of the sine function, you can write it like this, when x is equal to zero, if it's equal to, well, the cosine at zero, which is just one, then you can use some translation formulas and such to get it for the sine function and the cosine function for every other value of x. So hence for this is given in the lecture notes for this course. So the crucial part is to establish this. Now, when we want to differentiate, it's also useful here to first establish continuity. And both the continuity and the differentiability of sinus at this point can be obtained by, or have to be obtained geometrically, since we're, we are working with a geometric definition of the sine function. So what is this geometric definition? Well, if we have the unit circle here, and then we take some angle x here, then the value of the sine function is the height here. So this height is sine of x. Now, what we want to do to prove this thing here, well, of course, we need to look at the limit as h tends to 0 of sine h minus sine at 0, which is 0, divided by h. So we need to look at this thing here. Aha. So in fact, notice that we are improving the derivative for the sine at 0. What we're doing is we're actually proving this standard limit. So now the time has come to prove that sine h divided by h tends to zero. So if I want to use h here, strictly speaking, I would want to put my angle h here, okay? Now what? For simplicity, let's just think of h tending to zero from the positive side. And as h tends to zero, well, it at some point will be close to zero. So let's also just think of angles here between zero and pi half. Now, what can we do? So you can both do the following using length or using area. And we're choosing to use area here. So we are now going to look at an inequality between three areas. What are these? Well, the smallest one would be the area I'm getting if I, if I do a straight line here. Okay, so the area here, the baseline here is one and the height is sine h. What's the area of a triangle with height sine h and base length one? Well, that's sine h, so the height, times the base length divided by two. And now I can add a little bit here so that I'm considering the area of this piece of cake, the circle sector. And what's this area? Well, if h was here two pi, I would get all of the circle here, the area of the complete thing, which would be pi. So the the formula for the area of a circle is pi r to the square. So when r is one is just pi, so I'm getting here pi. And if I have another h, I'm getting the fraction here, h divided by two pi. Or how much of this angle do I have? If h is zero, I'm getting nothing. If h is two pi, uh, I'm getting everything that is pi. And if h is something between, I'm getting this. And of course, this sector here is geometrically clearly bigger than the triangle that was inside. And finally, if I now continue this line here, and then I go straight up here, I'm getting here a little piece which I can add now. So now I have this triangle, and his area is clearly bigger than all of the other areas. So remember, we're doing a geometrical argument here, so being rigorous is just out the window. Anyway, my base length is still one, but what's my height now? Well, now I'm moving at the slope of this line here, and the slope of this line is this thing here divided by that thing. But that's a tangent. So here I'm moving one to the side and then I'm following a line with the slope that has tangent h. So then I will end up here at the height, tangent h. So here I get tan h times one divided by two. Multiply up by two, killing this, I see here I get sinus h less than h less than the tangent of h. Now this inequality here is really nice because based on this thing, I can both see that sine h has to go to zero as h tends to zero. So geometrically, that's kind of clear. So you can say that, I guess we've done worse here. So the fact that sine h tends to zero as h tends to zero is either geometrically clear 
Or you could say here, I'm getting half of it from a squeeze. Then I have to use this in a clever way to get the other half uh, of the squeeze. But I can deduce now that this tends to zero, which in particular means that the sign is continuous at zero. And then I can use this in a slightly more clever way to be able to do a squeeze theorem, proving that this guy here tends to one. And once I have this, then I have the derivative of the sine function at x is equal to zero. And then what's the next step? Well, you can use all of this to figure out the derivative of the cosine at x is equal to zero also, which would be zero. Um, just to give you a hint here, this is lim age cosine age minus one divided by age. And here you can use the half angle formula. And now once you have these two things, how to prove the derivative of sine at another point. And this here would be the lim as h tends to zero of sine x plus h minus sine x like this. And here you can use the addition formula to split this up. And then you'll see you'll get an expression where you'll need this and you'll need this and nothing else to get, the, get that this thing here is equal to cosine x. And then similarly, you can get the derivative of the cosine. So I'm leaving all of these details up to you, but hopefully I've been able to convey the uh, bird's eye perspective on this.